Often, outbreak investigators are limited on the number of samples they can take. This video will help you identify and prioritize sites where contamination is more likely to occur. There are three main things you must do when selecting sampling sites. Know the pathogen, identify potential niches, and keep your eyes open and look everywhere. Let's look into these three areas more closely. First, you should understand the pathogen under investigation so you can individualize a sampling plan to search for that particular pathogen. Different pathogens require you to look in different places. For example, Listeria monocytogenes thrives in cold and wet environments. Salmonella likes wet environments, but is also capable of surviving for long periods in very dry environments. Please refer to our pathogen-specific quick train videos for more information. When conducting an environmental investigation, you are sampling weeks or months after the contamination event happened so you are in search of places where pathogens are most likely to persist in a food facility. You want to avoid surfaces that are easy to clean and sanitize, such as flat surfaces and walls, as they are likely to have been well cleaned since the outbreak occurred. Second, remember that you are looking for potential niches of pathogens. These are locations within the equipment or environment of the food facility that are not easily accessible during routine cleaning and sanitation, where bacteria can survive, become established, and multiply. Consider and look for hard to reach and rarely cleaned areas that may harbor moisture and food residue. Microbial niches may include areas inside equipment, inside hollow rollers, drains and frames, cracks in the floor, cracks and crevices at the floor wall junction, spaces between metal to metal and plastic to plastic or plastic to metal interfaces, and behind gaskets and seals. For example, drains are an easy way to capture the worst case scenario of the whole room, as water that has touched equipment and floors flows into drains. If listeria are present in a room, it's likely it will end up in the drain. Also remember that finding listeria in a drain can result in the cross-contamination of food. Many facilities will have practices in place that allow for transfer of bacteria from drains onto food contact surfaces and food. For example, the use of high-pressure hoses for cleaning floors and drains results in the spray carrying particles up and out of the drain into the facility environment. Other potential niches include cleaning aids such as mops, brushes, squeegees, and floor scrubbers. For example, brushes are constructed in a way that creates many difficult to access crevices that are nearly impossible to clean. During an investigation, some potential niches are often found inside equipment making disassembly necessary for proper sampling of these deep parts that do not get cleaned regularly and can harbor food residue. Some equipment of interest may need to be taken apart to sample those deep parts that do not get cleaned regularly and can create growth niches. For example, deli slicers. During cleaning and sanitation procedures, this piece of equipment might be partially disassembled at best, leaving room for residue to accumulate in deeper parts of the equipment that are never reached by cleaners or sanitizers if not taken apart properly. You want to disassemble until you get to those hard to reach parts of the equipment they may harbor dirt and residue. When disassembling equipment, try to get someone from the facility to do it. Find personnel that routinely take apart the equipment so the disassembly can be done safely and fast. If you have to do it yourself, 
check your local health department policy, as you might be liable if anything breaks. If it is not against department policy to disassemble equipment, remember to bring the proper tools. Third, remember to keep your eyes open and look everywhere, including up. For example, you could see a ceiling with water stains pointing out that there might be a leak in the roof. Additionally, there could be condensation buildup on the ceiling or on pieces of equipment that can drip onto food product. Leave no stone unturned. You should also consider looking into places behind or underneath equipment. Places that are hard to reach are often neglected during sanitation and could be a good place for pathogens to hide. Now you know the main things you need to do when selecting sampling sites. Know the pathogen, identify potential niches, and keep your eyes open and look everywhere. You are now prepared to select appropriate sampling sites.